my five greatest stories. Number one. Everybody remembers their mixed doubles last year at Wimbledon against uh, Murray and Serena Williams. I was walking to the court and Serena, Serena and I were chatting. And just so, and I even, you know, made the comment. I was like, so when was the last time you played on court two? <laughs> and because, I mean, who puts Serena on court two? You know, she's center court or court one, but court two. And she's like, oh, Venus and I play doubles there all the time. And I was thinking like, <laughs> Oh, okay. So it maybe it is normal for her to be on court too. I don't know, um, but I know Bruno because he used to play with Jamie, and now we're playing against Andy, their brothers. But him and Andy were having a little bit of uh, trash talking, like a few days leading up to the match. Like, oh, you need. Uh, Bruno told him, "Oh, you're supposed to win. You're the favorite, former number one and singles home crowd favorite." And then Andy comes back and says, no, but you, you guys are the top seeds. Like, we have no chance against you. And so I know they were going back and forth. And I, I was tight a little bit before the match just because, you know, the crowd is going to be on Andy's side and Serena's side. Um, to be fair, at Wimbledon, they were actually very, um, very neutral. They were very respectful. But... I knew I wanted to win and it's something that you work for. You know, you beat Serena, you beat, uh, if you beat Serena and Andy Murray at Wimbledon, I mean, that's a dream to play against them. And it's an even, it's a task and an opportunity to beat them. So I was excited for the match and I was well prepared. And I remember first few points of the match, she rocketed some balls right at me and I was ready And, you know, in the beginning of the match, when you start and you're um, easing into it, but you hit a few really good shots right from the beginning, you know you're right there and ready. And I think from that point on, it wasn't smooth sailing. It was a great match. It was up and down. Um, there were moments where we all played well and where we didn't play as well. But the feeling to beat Serena and Andy, I think, um, I think yeah, that's, that's definitely very high on my list. That was... That was a big one. Number two. What do you consider your favorite story playing mixed doubles? My favorite story playing mixed doubles. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just, I think the fact that, um, hmm. ah, here's a good one. So my second uh, mixed doubles at Wimbledon, I was, looking for a partner this was 2007 it must have been 2017 and i was asking anybody to play and no one wanted to play with me they were everybody was set and then i text a german guy andre begeman and uh he responds he's like yeah sure why not and then basically oh next time you walk by me just wave so i so i know who you are <laughs> I was like, okay, so we didn't really know even what each other looked like, but we had to go for our first match, and uh, I showed up to the practice court, and I texted him, I'm like, hey, we're on practice court, whatever, 13, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'll be there, he came 10 minutes late, like, okay, well, he's taking it serious, but we warmed <laughs> up, and And uh, he was like, oh, okay, you're not bad. And I was like, oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, we go and we were playing against British wildcards, Laura Robson and Dom Inglot. And uh, we were TBA for a court and we, someone retired early on court one. So we ended up going on court one and we played an amazing match just super relaxed and had a lot of fun and serving bombs and he's a great doubles player especially on grass and and we beat them actually pretty easy i think it was maybe three and three or something and you know we walk off the court and he's like okay i, th I think this can work and to to be fair it was my first win ever um at wimbledon i'd never won a match at wimbledon before so my first win on court one i think i think that was very special but um so next day uh we go again i text him what practice court we have this time he's only five minutes late and i was like okay well <laughs> that's an improvement we go and uh we were playing delacqua and ram and we're the last uh we end up being the last match that day 
because uh, we play so long and we end up winning 15 13 in games in the third set that's the longest set i've ever played and they were almost going to call the match because it was starting to get dark and uh at the i was just so excited at the end i like jumped up and like put my arms up almost like we won the tournament <laughs> but um i kind of landed on my foot funny and I, I so i hurt my foot but the next day luckily was middle sunday so i didn't practice then monday was a bit better and we had the day off and we didn't play till tuesday but then it rained so it was even better and so we didn't play till wednesday and wednesday he showed up on time for the practice. I was like, all right, improving again. And um, it was his birthday. So as we walk on the court, we're warming up. My dad, the, the cheer that he is, he starts singing happy birthday. And the whole stadium, we're playing on court 12, which is quite a big court, starts joining him and singing happy birthday for Andre, <laughs> which was amazing. And then our opponents realized it was his birthday. And I feel like always when it's someone's birthday, um, you know, you get a little tight you know, because maybe that birthday luck or something. Well, we end up beating Danny Nestor and Andrea Klepot, 7-5 in the third, on his birthday, to then make the quarterfinals. And uh, so the day of the quarterfinals, not only is he on time for practice, he's running from the gym. Oh. <laughs> he's already warmed up for practice. And then we went on uh, court one, and our fairy tales ended there. We ended up losing in a close match with uh, Bruno Suarez and Elena Vecina. But from being 10 minutes late to five minutes late to on time to then running from the gym, I, I thought that was a good effort. It kept improving. <laughs> Number three. What is your best memory from a tournament? Well, I mean, obviously, I think it has to be winning Wimbledon in the mix in 2018. Um, that whole, those whole two weeks were just unbelievable. Um, before the tournament, I wasn't even sure that I was going to be able to play because I, I had hurt my thumb and uh, the week before we lost first round in Eastbourne and we were really down um, from that match. And we, then I hurt my thumb and practiced the next day. So it was, it was a lot of events that led up to it. I think it helped take the pressure off, but um, Kveta and I played really strong in the doubles. And, uh, and I think I didn't even lose my serve until the semifinals and maybe neither did she. We were just serving so well on the grass and, and when you're serving well, all you need is a break, but making it to the final was, um, was absolutely amazing and actually the day um the day of my semifinals i had both semifinals in the same day so probably that was the most special moment because i won my double semifinal was absolutely thrilled and then i go for my mixed semifinals so loose and relaxed and happy that i played even better probably the best match of the tournament to make another final two finals in the same day um but unfortunately losing the losing the doubles final. We played a really good match, but uh, the Czech girls were just a bit better than us that day. But then the next day, I was so nervous. I, um, I was very proud of myself for making both finals, but I didn't want to, I wanted to walk away with at least one trophy, a uh, winner's trophy, not zero. And so I really wanted to go out and compete well and perform and playing against Maria Zarenka. On paper, we were the favorites because we were the see the team but uh not on paper they were expecting them to win because uh their uh, jamie had won it the year before and azarenka with her singles career um they were the the more well-known team and i think that also took a little pressure off us and if you watch the highlights from the match we were just laughing and enjoying and just <laughs> just playing free and relaxed and we ended up winning and it was it was just the most incredible feeling number four could you share with us your favorite story? At the end of 2017, um, I had the opportunity to uh, play with uh, Kveta Peške for the 2018 season. And um, so I was chatting with her coach, who was my current coach at the time. And I had uh, I had told him many years prior that I was I was interested to to work with uh, work with him because I saw he's he's a double specialist coach, 
and that he's training so many of, of the best doubles players. And so for, for a couple of years, I had, you know, occasionally tried to sneak into, um, sneak into his practices asking like, Hey, if you ever need someone to practice, practice with, I'm available. And, um, and if you ever have an open spot in your team, I would, I would love to be part of it. Um, so then finally, at the end of 2017, I got the opportunity where he said that he would, um, he would like to add me to his team. And uh, I actually originally said no, because I was currently at the time playing with Anna Smith. And her and I were doing quite well together. But then after, after about a week, I thought maybe I uh, made a mistake. And I knew it was someone who I wanted to work with. And also Kveta as a player, someone that I wanted to play with. So I asked for another meeting and, uh, and said that I would really like to play with Kveta. And then a couple of weeks later, she called me and, and she agreed to play with me. And I think, uh, I think the rest is history from there. I've won, um, we won five titles together, um, two internationals, three premier tournaments. We made the finals of Wimbledon. Um, we, we created a great friendship uh, together. Um, she lives on the west coast of Florida in Sarasota. Um, and I live near her, so we could uh, train and practice together at the time. And uh, it really turned into something something good. So it was, it was kind of nice how I feel like I was determined to uh, maybe get the opportunity to play with someone good. But the fact that they gave me the chance and the fact that I, I did well, you know, I, I think I held up to the standard. And I think she really helped me improve on the court. Um, on and off the court as a player and as a person really helped me grow. So, um, so I think that's probably so far um, my, best, my best story and the best decision that I could have made for my tennis. Number five. Could you share with us a story about Fed Cup? Ooh, Fed Cup. <laughs> well, my first Fed Cup tie was uh, the Fed Cup final in Prague. And so USA against Czech Republic, and that was very special for me because being born in the Czech Republic and having um, having a Czech background, but playing for the States, growing up in the States, being American, competing for the States, I just, I think, I mean, what better way to start my cup career? Unfortunately, I didn't get to play, but the atmosphere in Prague was unbelievable. I must say that the crowd did a great job of being extremely fair but they were so loud like you could you couldn't hear anything in there the atmosphere was electric it was in inside the hockey arena so it was a little bit cold you know the fed cup final is in november so it's already cold in there but the fact that it's an ice skating rink you know it's even a bit colder but then you have every single match going three sets going down to the wire having match points losing them it was just it was a an amazing atmosphere but then um a few months later in february i got to play my first uh, my first match for fed cup and it was in Asheville, so um in north carolina and we were at home playing against australia and we played the deciding match and um i played with daniel collins again we played a great match it was it was four players competing on the court myself daniel collins ashley barty and priscilla hahn and we left it all out there and i think there were more winners than errors in that match it was just so clean such good tennis but again it came it came down to um losing just by a couple of points but um the atmosphere i won't forget when your home country is cheering for you every single point and they're behind you and no matter if you win or lose the point they want you to win and they're they're cheering for you to inspire you rather than put you down you know there's a difference between let's go nikki or let's go nikki <laughs> you know and when you really hear the love and support from the crowd that's just uh, there's no better feeling what's the difference between playing doubles and fed cup well, you're not playing only for yourself. There is a whole bench there with you. They're cheering for you every point. But you you know, if you lose that match, it's not only you losing, it's, it's the whole team losing. So um, there's definitely a sense of pressure. You know, the whole country, or at least all the, all the tennis fans in the country are watching you and wanting you to do well and wanting to support you. Um, 
and you don't want to let them down. Uh, if I'm at a <laughs> tournament and I lose, then, you know, maybe I let myself and my partner down or my coach or, you know, a few people in my team. But when you're at Fed Cup, it's so, it's just so much bigger than that. And we're not supposed to think about that when we're on the court, but you can definitely feel it. But it's in a positive way. You feel the strength that like the country and your team are giving you in those moments.